Hello, my name is Kate McCall, and I will be doing my research paper and presentation today about Anish Kapoor and his infamous sculpture Cloudgate, also known as the Chicago Bean. In this presentation, I hope to show Anish Kapoor's artwork evolution throughout his career and to discuss the spiritual connections that seep into all of his artwork, and particularly in Cloudgate. First, allow me to introduce the artist, Anish Kapoor. Sir Anish Kapoor is a British Indian sculptor. He is particularly famous for his installations and conceptual art. Kapoor was born in Mumbai, India, and attended an all-boys boarding school called the Dune School. After initially studying as an electrical engineer in Israel, he decided to become an artist instead and moved to Britain in 1973 to attend Hornsey College of Art and Chelsea School of Art and Design. Kapoor's early work consists of simple geometric forms. This work, as if to celebrate, I discovered a mountain blooming with red flowers. Kapoor has sculpted triangular forms that are meant to resemble the shakaras that stand on top of temples and the Himalayan mountains. The work relates to Kapoor having read the Hindu myth of the goddess, who was born out of a fiery mountain which was composed of the bodies of male gods. Kapoor was interested in this image of the transmission and transmutation of power, the idea of the energy of one force giving way to or being translated into the energy and substance of another. In this sense, we are able to witness the spiritual connections that this artist has towards his artwork. And in this particular point in his career, Kapoor's work is symbolic and connects directly to his own sense of spirituality. Anish Kapoor also worked on a work called Void Field, exhibited in the British Pavilion at the 1990 Bent Venice Banal. The idea of the void is a common theme that exists through much of Kapoor's work. As the artist sa says, void is really a state within. I find myself coming back to the idea of narrative without storytelling, to that which allows one to bring in psychology, fear, death, and love in as direct a way as possible. This void is not something which is of no utterance. It is a potential space, not a non-space. The work consists of large blocks of sandstone with a hole in the top filled with black pigment. The work functions as a juxtaposition between the large mass of the sandstone and the void within each of the heavy blocks. There is a sense of presence and absence between the concrete and the unspecific. And again, we see a connection with spirituality and Kapoor's work in viewing the void field. However, now we see his work changing to be less specific and more all-encompassing. Since 1995, he has worked with a highly reflective surface of polished stainless steel. These works are mirror-like, reflecting or distorting the viewer and surroundings. This led to the creation of several new works, including this work called Sky Mirror, which was unveiled in 2001. The work reflects the changing of its surroundings, and we can begin to see a theme emerging for Kapoor that revolves around the changing um, the viewer's perspective. In viewing Sky Mirror, we see the sky coming down to the earth to mingle with the earthly elements of nature. We see the juxtaposition once again between the smooth, hard, cold, and the organic, earthy, and warm. In reading about the artwork, one author wrote, it sits on the ground, yet it looks towards the sky and therefore signifies the potential for humans to equally set their sights above, pulling the sky down to earth in a sublime union of elemental forces. The sculpture prevents, presents a proposition about space that is a central inquiry in Kapoor's work and that transcends one's earthly's, earthly groundings. Continuing work with this idea of the sky and highly reflective surfaces, 
Kapoor created his next project, Cloudgate. Kapoor's 110-ton stainless steel sculpture with its mirror finish was chosen in 1999 for this permanent art installation over many other artists who had entered their ideas for the space in Millennium Park, Chicago. The construction of Cloudgate was fairly complex. I believe this to be of importance to this presentation, if not for any other reason than to appreciate what we often take for granted. When we walk up to a sculpture of this magnitude, we tend to end up entranced by the beauty of the sculpture and forget about the process of creation of such a thing of beauty. I would like to take a moment to share about how Cloudgate even came to exist and match the artist's vision. The sheer weight of the structure, originally intended to only be just over 60 tons, ended up topping out at 110 tons. This meant that the engineers had to make sure that there was enough support in the ground to support such a weight. Computer imagery was also necessary for Kapoor to make his proposed sculpture a reality, as well as a plan for the interior structure of such a large-scale sculpture. The unique form of Cloudgate posed many engineering problems that needed to be solved, especially considering the environment in which the sculpture would reside. In reading about these issues, an article read that engineers were worried that it might retain and conduct heat in a way that would make it too hot to touch during the summer or so cold that one's tongue might stick to it during the winter. The extreme temperature variation between seasons was also feared to weaken the structure. Inner bracing needed to be designed in such a way as to not overload any specific point which would distort the sculpture. The most pressing issue was the need to create a single seamless exterior. To continue to quote the same article, considering that I am personally unfamiliar with engineering mechanics, the sculpture's structure was designed by British engineering firm Atelier One and freelance engineer Chris Hornsey Jones. Performance Structures Inc. or PSI, was chosen to fabricate it due to their ability to produce nearly invisible welds, which would become really important in this particular project. Cloudgate is comprised of 168 stainless steel panels, each 3 8 inch thick and weighing between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds each. Each plate is attached directly to a section of the sculpture's subframe, which is designed to strengthen the plates and reinforce the plate's shape during transport. Wow, what a process was undertaken to produce this beautiful structure. Cloudgate remains today in Millennium Park and continues to entrance viewers from all over the world. The sculpture is absolutely incredible and massive. Here you can see a more unconventional view of the sculpture from above. Unveiled on May 15, 2006, Cloudgate is unlike anything we have ever seen before. Like his work in Sky Mirror, Cloudgate reflects the sky, bringing it down to earth. When viewing the work, the viewer becomes part of the artwork itself. This is in part because the viewer can also see themselves reflected in the work itself. They interact and participate in the sculpture and become part of it. This act is spiritual in itself, as we see ourselves reflected with the sky. Not only can we simply see ourselves in the sculpture, but we can also enter into it. The underside of Cloudgate consists of the omphalos, or navel. It is essentially a warped dimension of fluid space. An article reads that, in this dimension, solid is transformed into fluid in a disorienting, multiplicative manner that intensifies the experience. This is the view looking directly up into the navel of Cloudgate. It is easy to see how the space can be disorienting. It envelops the viewing of the work itself and blends the viewer's sense of reality with that of the sculpture. It is truly an experience to view and become part of the sculpture Cloudgate by Kapoor. In looking up at the sculpture, 
it is sometimes even impossible to know where the sculpture ends and the sky begins. It is certainly a spiritual experience. Cloudgate is further transformed when viewed from different seasons and lighting situations. The nighttime sky makes the sculpture come alive with lights, creating a whole new effect than it did during the daylight. It is endlessly changing and evolving with the environment, suggesting a look into our own reality and how we interact with our daily world. Take a look at this view of Cloudgate during the winter months, and you will see a whole new side to this beautiful sculpture and how it truly envelops the spiritual beauty of the world in which we dwell. Another interesting note, also because I found this to be interesting, but Kapoor's contract states that the constructed piece should be expected to survive for 1,000 years. I like to think about what Cloudgate will reflect in 1,000 years and what the sculpture will have seen during that time frame. Another interesting fact, in case you may be wondering, how it remains so sparkling clean. The lower six feet of the cloud gate is wiped down twice a day, while the entire sculpture is cleaned twice a year with 40 gallons of liquid detergent. As for this particular image, Anish Kapoor is almost also famous for purchasing the exclusive rights for the ultra black pigment Vanta Black. However, that is a whole nother story, and if you don't know it, look it up. Such controversy. To conclude, Anish Kapoor's sculpture, Cloudgate, is spiritual to its very core. It is interactive and endlessly changing. It pulls the sky down to us and creates a whole new reality. To quote Kapoor, just as you can't set out to make something beautiful, you can't set out to make something spiritual. What you can do is recognize that it may be there. It normally has something to do with not having too much to say. There seems to be space for the viewer. And it's sometimes, sometimes, sometimes something we identify as being spiritual. And it is all about space. These are my Works Cited page. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate your time. Thank you.